So hi everyone. I'm trying something new today and that is that I've created a whiteboard and in order to do captioning I have my Microsoft Messenger going on recording my words so that after I do my video uh, we have closed captioning and I don't have to read off a script. How about that? So we're going to see how it works. Um, so my Full name is Heather Hollis Tharp King Albertson Hurley, who came after Hurley, Banesh, yes, that's a story, uh, Williams Goostry Aguilar. It is true, I've been married seven times. Uh, I've lived nine lives, actually. I own two dogs and one cat. Uh, my son is here too, and he has a cat, so that's three, dog, three cats in the house and one dog. Uh, seven kids four by birth, three by adoption. I absolutely hate canned spinach. That would have been my lie. I think it's slimy and disgusting. Popeye really overpitched it. And I'm thrilled to be teaching this term. That is for sure not a lie. Um, I loved reading all of your introductions. If you haven't told us which one is your lie, make sure you check in and let us know who was right and who was wrong. So we are starting module number two, week number two, and I'm going to just put it out there. Be sure to watch my videos before you proceed into the assignments. So one thing that I want you to know about this class is that I am going at it uh, understanding and looking at the target of consciousness. So if I were to make some circles here like this, on the outside, this is our, our value uh, belief systems. On the outside are our opinions, O-P-I-N-I-O-N-S. And I encourage you to take notes. On the outside of that ring would be opinion. And what you're gonna find out in this class is that everybody has opinions. They come, they go, they change, they should change, they should update as you learn. The next one is our belief systems, B-E-L-I-E-F. And one of the goals of this class is critical thinking. And the way that I'm going to get you to think is to challenge your belief systems. I want you to learn things you've never considered, to unlearn things that you thought you knew already, and to really look at the reasons behind what you do and what you think and how you behave. Now, in the middle of this circle are our values, V-A-L-U-E-S. That would be the bullseye. And that's ultimately where action comes from. The way we live, the choices we make, what we do and what we don't do, action. And that's the value, that's the core. My job as a professor teaching critical thinking is to get you to examine your values. And for my older students, this is the most difficult part of the class. Because once you start looking and researching values and, and why we do and how we do and what our motivations are, how things change, then it really calls into question the choices we've made, right? This promotes and um, evokes critical thinking. So those are kind of my three areas of target, opinion, belief, and values. If I upset you, I'm supposed to because that's how you get to think. Now, it's really weird that we're not in a classroom and I've been answering a whole bunch of questions. And so I just want to address a couple of them. One, your book. You need to order it. You need to start reading it. Amazon has a great feature where you can get the audio version of the book. Huh. Pausing. You should have bought the book and if you got it on Amazon, they have an option for the audio version. And in this particular book, I really encourage you to listen to it as much as read it. You should be annotating it, understanding it, and even reading it twice if necessary. The book is historical fiction, but we're gonna delve into the history and the realities of this time period and really compare it to today and what's happening. So it's a great chance for us to get to know not just our past, but also our present. We're gonna start talking about the book in week eight and it's going to be up to you uh, to know the book by week 10. Week 10 is dedicated to book assignments and by week 10 you should have that thing not just read but really mastered in terms of content. Now the next thing I want to talk about uh, a couple of the questions I got was how to become a better writer, a better reader, how do I build my vocabulary, how do I find confidence, 
and I'm going to give you five standing assignments. Now to repeat myself, to repeat myself, And these five assignments, you can really practice on your own for the whole duration of the term. What I keep looking at is the phone to make sure it's recording what I'm saying in word form. And it likes to put writing R-I-D-I-N-G, but actually you all know that the word should say writing W-R-I-T-I-N-G. That's one of the tricks to the English language, right? So how do we build vocabulary? and how do we build confidence as a writer. So here are the five assignments, not for a grade, but just for life practice that you should be paying attention to this term. First thing, I call it language moments. Language moments. Language moments is when you're paying attention to the difference between what is said and what is meant. If you can start building this awareness in the, in the world and have literal language moments, where you say, wow, I just said hello uh, to them asking me, how are you? Or when they ask you, how are you? Instead of saying, fine, say, do you really want to know? Now, here's another example. What's up? Well, we all know that that means how are you, right? What I want you to be able to say is the sky, the ceiling, really dumb question. Are you saying hello? Now, language moments comes in two ways. One is that we are in the habit of using cliches and shortcuts instead of really conversing and getting to know our peers and our neighbors. And so I do want you to pay attention to literal language. But the second way that language moments happen is when we're using words that have multiple meanings. And I want you to challenge yourself with vocabulary. When you hear a word, when you hear a word that has multiple meanings or potential to multiple meanings, play with synonyms, play with the different uh, definitions. And if somebody says, for example, draft beer, I want you internally to say draft. That could be mandatory service. That could be coming out of a machine. That could be um, an example or a rough draft, right? See if you can't find all of the other language alternatives to that word. This is language moments, when you are playing with and practicing your language. The second standing assignment would be uh, your dictionary work. I said in the syllabus that I want you all to have an in-print dictionary. The reason the in-print dictionary matters is because if you're only using an online version of a dictionary, you are only looking up words that you know. And what I need you to do is find words that you don't know. So the way this works is you take a dictionary, any dictionary, and I'm going to recommend you do five words a day. You randomly close your eyes and open up the dictionary, and then you take a handy highlighter and you highlight the word so that if you ever open up to that page again, you know that you've seen the word before. Now this matters a lot because what happens is you're putting brand new words into your head, words that you've never encountered, words that you've heard but you didn't know how to spell, or words that you've never even thought of and had no idea it was in this book. You do this five times, five times a day. Now, the goal is not to memorize anything. The goal is simply to find out that the word exists, okay? Now, in a year or two years or five years, that word is going to find you. This is how it works. You're writing a, an assignment and you're thinking, what was that word that I read back in English 1A? Okay, what does it mean? So now here's where Google comes in. Hey, Google, what does it mean when two groups are going in one direction and the one group on the right passes and google's going to tell you flanking and i'm like flanking that's the word i read back in 2020. you don't have to know the word but you have to know how to find the word this is the second uh, book work assignment now the third standing assignment has to do with um, also language, of course. And this is you kind of taking something of an informal language log. 
What I want you to do is to pay attention to how many different words you use in a 24-hour span. Now, Shakespeare, one of the world's greatest writers and probably historically the most important writer, he had a working vocabulary of 35,000 words. Okay, That's a big number. That is the dictionary. Most high school graduates today have a working vocabulary of only 1,500 words. Now, by the time you have your bachelor's degree, that vocabulary number should be up to 5,000. And by the time you have your master's degree, that vocabulary list should be up to about 7,000. So the big question is, how do I build my vocabulary? And the answer is, number one, see where you're at when you begin. Number two, do your dictionary work. And number three, really start building your vocabulary. So here's a little game. If somebody says, pass the butter at dinner, I want you to say, hand me the butter, acquire the butter, take the butter, process the butter, use the butter, utilize the butter. Come up with all of the derivatives to how you might ask for and or take that item. In other words, push yourself, okay? Really play with synonyms and antonyms, get to know your homophones, and I gave you a whole bunch of links in one of these modules. Now, the last standing assignment that I need you to pay attention to is using literal language, not just listening to literal language, but saying specifically what you mean and describing it. I want you to pretend that every item that you talk about requires five sentences. Use adjectives, use nouns, use pronouns, use descriptors, use synonyms, use antonyms, use homophones. And if you don't know those words, begin your quest by looking them up. You're gonna notice that the next thing that we do is look up a whole bunch of words. And it's really important to do this because we have a vocabulary goal. It's very hard to write when you don't own words. And so that is gonna be your main goal in life. Now, very lastly, as we proceed, any word that you encounter that you don't know, you need to look up. Put it in a notebook, add the definition, and, and start building your vocabulary that way. Real life, read a newspaper, oh, I don't know that word. Read a book, oh, I don't know that word. You're listening to me lecture, I don't know that word. It's gonna be really important that you do the footwork here to grow the words at your disposal. Uh, every one of the links in this module for week two is going to have a video, so make sure you're watching them before you proceed. I'll talk to you soon.